Hey guys, this is the fifth part of the sample mounting and polishing tutorial. Uh, now we've mounted our samples and we've also polished or, or yeah, polished our samples using silicon carbide pads so far. Now in this case, we in this video we'll move on to the little more complex the diamond pads and the diamond suspensions. They're they're even even smaller particles than the silicon carbide. So let's see what I have. All right. So I've done all my 600 grit paper um, uh, steps, silicon carbide. Now the, the th you're probably going to say, oh, okay, let's move to the 800 uh, silicon carbide. I don't like to do that personally because um, silicon carbide, they, they, they are paper after all. And the paper itself is squishy. Once it starts being a little squishy, uh, the particles, it, the 800 grit paper starts being a little artificial and what do I mean by that? It starts actually just uh, smearing your material and covering the scratches that are underneath it. Uh, we saw an example of that kind of like that when we moved from 400 to 600 I think it was or maybe from 240 to 400 where there was a deep scratch but also seemed like it was being covered by some material and so <clears throat> That, imagine that happening now at a smaller scale level when you jump from 600 to 800. So I don't really like this 800 step. I, I actually uh, skip it and do a different thing. Um, some people don't like to use these pads uh, because they take a long time. I really like them. They, I think they make the sample much better. So these pads, what they are is uh, these, these shapes that you see here are uh, or some kind of clay that is embedded with small particles, small diamonds in it. This particular one actually, the blue, the blue pads, um, they are diamonds 800, 8 microns in size. So there's, there's little particles, little diamonds in here, 8 microns in size, inside, inside the, the, the brown colored clay. Now, as you put your sample on top of this, the diamonds get exposed and they start uh, scratching your sample and removing material. So that's how these work. Uh, these are reusable because they're not like the silicon carbide particles where the silicon carbide particles are just floating on top of that paper and they fall off and they, they fall into the water. Now this, this clay, this really hard clay uh, is embedded with the diamonds and the diamonds stay there. Maybe after a while the diamonds become a little dull, so you do need to sharpen the diamonds, and that's that's what I'm what I'm about to do because I don't know who used this last. So before I start using this pad, I'm gonna sharpen the diamonds a little bit, and it's not it's it's, uh, it's not that complicated. So the first thing is I'm gonna take this out because I want a another um, another plate that is actually magnetic. This is magnetic and this is metallic of course ferromagnetic and you can put this on top and it locks in there so this is ready i can put it in here there you go so my pad is ready my diamond pad is ready i could get this wet and start polishing right now but actually i told you i want to sharpen this up the samples and that's why you use this stone for this these these stones are uh, made of a very hard material that actually uh, removes a layer of diamonds or sharpens them as, uh, I'm not sure if it sharpens them, that's so sharpening a diamond, that sounds like you can't. So it probably what it does is actually remove uh, the, the diamonds, that a thin layer of diamonds that are actually dull for my sample and it reveals samples that are underneath in that clay. That clay starts off pretty thick when you first buy one of these pads but it starts getting thinner and thinner until it disappears so so make sure you replace these pads probably I don't know you can use them for six months or so uh, I think it's time to change this one but I'll use it uh, just just for this once and the settings change I want actually this to be we can run this for five minutes actually so I'm gonna run this for five minutes the speed is gonna be a little uh, slower I'm gonna stay at um, 200 Oh, let's just say at 250, it doesn't matter. However, the fours, I do want it to be a little less. So I'm going to stay at five pounds of force before, for every silicon carbide step. 
we a stub where we're using 10. So I'm going to uh, take down 5 pounds and let's sharpen the diamond. So I'm going to move the head out of the way. I'm going to turn this on and the water on. So the water is floating. It's, it's got my sample, my, my, the pad, nice and white. Now I use the stone and I put it on top of the, you can use the edge so it actually is it, a little more pressure. Don't, don't apply too much pressure because this is actually removing some of the clay and some of the diamonds. You don't want to overdo it. So I'm just applying a fair amount of pressure. I, I think I'm putting about a pound, not much. Just letting, letting this go for about 30 seconds. So that right there should have removed a layer of diamonds and made it a slightly um, and revealed the same the diamonds that are underneath that are still sharp. So it's ready to polish about five minutes of my samples and my samples are over here. I've already cleaned them, make sure made sure that I've removed any water or anything because I don't want any 600 grit particles to still be in there. And it goes the same thing. I've already set my settings over here. Take this down. <clears throat> Put my samples in. And press the two buttons again. And off they go. I want to, actually I want even less water on this one. There you go. Uh, now I'm going to wait five minutes and I'll show you guys what these look like. Alright, I've done five minutes of this with using this 8 micron pad. And the samples are looking a lot better. Now, let's see what 600 was before. This is 600, the last step of 600. Notice it, look at this one and check out how much the structure gets better. There you go, 8 micron. 600, 8 micron much better. Now there's a deep scratch in here that I'm not happy about. I'll probably do another five minutes of this, although I won't take pictures of that. But uh, I find I'm, uh, that doing transverse cross sections like these ones, five minutes, sorry, t that total of 10 minutes in a micron is, is good enough. This one looks dirty, um, but um, there's less scratches or fewer scratches. And that's about it. Let's see what uh, the diamond suspensions can do. Uh, one thing that remember that this step, the main reason I want this to do this step is because it get, gets rid of uh, the silicon carbide particles, which should be all gone by now. Okay, so remember I'm moving to a new grid size. So I've, I've cleaned this properly. I've taken everything that I've used. I've put it back where I found it. Uh, make sure you do that every time you use anything in this laboratory. Put it back where you found it and leave it as the way you found it. So uh, let's move to the next type of pads. Now, uh, again, I, the previous step that I showed you with the with the blue diamond impregnated pad, it was uh, it, it the surface didn't look that much better. With this one, it will. Uh, this these this is actually a really good step. This is this is uh, the nylon pad. This is just a nylon pad. Uh, is non abrasive. So if you if you put your sample on top of this and start polishing, it's not going to grind off. It's not going to take take that much material off. You actually have to couple it with this. And this is the again I showed you before. This is a water based diamond suspension. Uh, and this particular one has a six micron, six micrometer size particles in it. So we're going to use these two. And notice that they, they these are very white, very clean. Uh, they get dirty quickly, but the, if it's dirty, it doesn't mean that it doesn't work anymore. And they actually work for a long period of time. And what I do actually is I put them in these separated Ziploc bags. To avoid contamination, and I label this one. For example, I've labeled this one six microns, and uh, this is has got its own disc. It's pretty dirty, but it, trust me, it still works really well. 
And what I do is I put these little labels on and I tell and I say, well, well, this one was actually installed on the first time that someone used it was in uh, this date. And for every five minutes of use, you mark one of these boxes. And after 10 uses, you can actually discard it. Uh, for demonstration, I'm actually going to remove this and start with a fresh one. So uh, let's, and, and, and I have that for all the others. I have a three micron here that ha was installed in this on this date and it was used only five times. So this one will probably, I won't actually, one, once we jump to three micron, the other solution, three microns right here, three micron, uh, you, uh, we will be using uh, this pad, this dirty pad. Dirty doesn't mean bad. And then here's the one micron, same thing, in their own, in, in its own Ziploc bag to avoid contamination. So our first one came out of the Ziploc bag, six micron. And actually I want to change it because I, uh, I could have used it one more time, but just, just to demonstrate and show you guys how it's done, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to put the plate, this disc back in there, move the head out of the way. And well, this is what the pad looked like. I'm going to put it in its respective shape so it doesn't stick all over my trash can. And there you go. Let me wipe this just a little bit. And I grab a fresh pad off of the box, take it out, see the difference? This is brand new, clean. Uh, these are about $17 a pop, so just use them, uh, keeping in mind that, you know, they, they are worth, they are kind of expensive, so you don't want to waste them. Now, this is why we're using them at least 10 times before we throw them away. Oh, okay, so here's where bubbles start being a little important. You don't want any bubbles in your sample, in, in underneath your, your, your pad. With silicon carbide, I don't really care much about bubbles, but once I get to these pads, one way to make sure that there's no bubbles, actually, I just put the center, uh, the center point in this little taco shape, put the center right there, and then drop one side. Once that side is already set, and I know is, is, is going to be filling the entire plate and not, not be too uh, uh, misaligned, I can start, I should have done this on this side so the camera can see it. So let, let me start with this side and I can start just going back and forth with my finger here, making sure that there's no bubbles underneath, in between the plate and the pad. Slowly, make sure there's no bubbles. Keep going. And there you go. So this is looking good. Make sure your hands are really clean when you do this, all right? And now, what you do is you take your, your suspension, and like any other suspension, you have to shake it before you use it. Shake it, and you drop about six spritz on here. These bottles are about a hundred dollars a pop so again be a little uh, frugal with how much you put in. Now there you go. So now we're ready. So all we have to do we just we had that much we lock in our 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 head all the settings are the same five minutes 250 five pounds Press these two buttons, all the way down, release, put this in. Now you don't need water for this one, don't need water for this one, I repeat. So you can put the water just going away, make sure it doesn't fall in here, press these two buttons, and it can actually stop the, the, the water just by clicking this right here. And it will go, and it will get really dirty during these five minutes, we'll see when it when it's done. But every minute or so, if it gets too dry, you're probably going to do this every two minutes, maybe. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to add a little spray. Uh, right now is, is all right. This, you don't want to get it too wet because then you'll start hydroplaning. You don't want to get it too dry because then you don't have any more particles stumbling and removing material. So when it looking, it's looking a little dry, I'm probably in about two minutes, I'm going to do one more spray. 
and leave it in. Uh, again, so you start with six or five sprays and then add one every two minutes or so. Okay, so let's wait for this to be over and I'll show you the pictures. This step makes a huge difference and you'll see it. All right, look at the huge difference this made. This is the six micron step versus the previous eight micron. Six micron, eight micron, six micron. Now, uh, notice how clean the aluminum block got. That is, that change is huge. The other ones um, got even cleaner. There's niobium here. Let me zoom in. And the oven here looks virtually scratchless. However, uh, as you will see, there's 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 more to be done here, but it's making everything much better. This, this diamond suspensions are great. Notice how some material polishes with different rates than others. All of this damage that you see on this soft tin is precisely because it was soft and is still from a previous run, from the eight eight micron run. So they will go away if you keep doing more of these. But let's see what the three micron and the one micron can do. Okay, um, this one I've already washed and dried. So and see how dirty it got from being perfectly white? It's okay, don't worry about it. Um, I've filled a new, a new sheet and you'll find these little papers where you find these. Uh, so I've, I put the information on it and I can put it back in here, make sure it's dry. Uh, don't close it. Don't, don't close the Ziploc back. You want this to breathe or else it'll probably get some mold on it. So I'll just leave this open like this and put it back in, it, in, the, in, the, drawer, in the cabinet where it was. Uh, and now uh, we can move on to our next step. So I say three microns, this one right here. It's already been used five times, so it's a little dirty, no problem. Put it back on, there you go, and then grab my three micron solution, make sure it is the three micron solution right here, and spray one, two, three, four, five. You can use your hand to spread this out. Maybe another one. Just make sure you cover the entire surface with a thin layer of the suspension, but not not too much. You don't want to have too much suspension. There you go. And same settings. Press this. There you go. Put your samples in. And press this again. Ooh, turn the water off. Okay. Now look at the look at this difference. This is this is great. Um, the samples are looking so much better. This is three micron. Is great. Is is major difference. Uh, the tin is now looking much better than the previous one. Let me show you what the other one looked like. This is six micron. 3 micron, 6 micron, 3 micron. I did both 3 and 1, so let me show you the pictures now for 1. This is 1. Now, it's, uh, let's see what the difference is there. Maybe you see these scratches and this scratch in the 3 micron. And the 1 micron, they're gone. Uh, but I think this is as good as they get. But notice that someone could have, if they didn't know their sample, they would have gotten alarmed because of these little things right here. Uh, what are they stains no actually they're they're just voids in my sample but I know my sample I know those voids are supposed to be there this is why it's important how you for you to know your sample and also the of course the importance of a proper polishing job because if you were to measure anything out of here a three micron you see if you try to measure how much copper there is in between you would probably get a lot less uh, a, a lower measurement than if you try to measure it in, in this case and if you throw it in the vibration or polisher you will notice that the copper show up even more so you have to keep that in mind that whatever you're measuring if you didn't do a proper job in the polishing you might be altering your results and especially if you're looking at tiny little differences like I like I usually do um, so it's crucial that you take your time and you do a proper polishing job uh, 
Now, this, these are ready for the uh, vibrational polisher. All right, that's it for the diamond polishing of the transverse samples. Now, if you want to look at what how I polish the longitudinal cross sections, you can click here. However, if you want to see how the final polishing of the transverse cross section, polishing and cleaning of the transverse cross section is done, you can click here.